In this video I'm going to describe five habits that somebody had with their supposedly osteoarthritic knee and how they changed them and how that changed their pain. If you're interested in understanding what those habits were and how it changed them then watch the video. Okay, so let me describe this um, habitual pattern that this person had who told they needed a knee replacement but they were too young. So you hear that quite a lot, so a 40-something guy, uh, painful knee for five years or more, recurrent injuries, and the surgeon had had a look at his knee, found some osteoarthritis, probably told him bone on bone, or pretty grim picture and said you can't do anything other than the replacement but you're too young so you can hear that qu quite a lot you have to live with the symptoms you have to live with the condition and that's a lot until you get of an age where we can replace it for you well that basically that's a load of rubbish just my opinion by the way but based on what i've seen the pain can be reversed can be reduced can be gone completely or you can keep some pain if you need that degree of protection to stop you overdoing certain things in certain situations. It just doesn't have to be the constant level it is based on the belief of what that medical person's told you and what beliefs you have about that particular condition. So there's habitual patterns that develop um, and they become invisible to the person. And this gentleman, I asked him five things that he did as he got out of bed in the morning with his painful knee. He said, uh, put my foot down, uh, pull a face and a limp for the first few steps. And I always say, my effing knee. <laughs> He's so mad with it. And uh, I said, what else? Who else gets involved in this? He said, well, my wife always sees me limping, swearing, and pulling a face. And I said, what should she say? And he says, she says, is he playing too much golf? And he says, yeah, it's like that after I play golf. And she always says that after I play golf, but I like golf. And so he's got this habitual pattern he could predict it after playing golf he'll get up in the morning and put his foot down um, and he'll feel pain he anticipates pain he uh, limps pulls a face says my effing knee swears his wife hears him swear and says you're playing too much golf he says yeah but i like me golf and then gets on with his day now he goes to work and the fifth of the five i said what do you do to work on those days he said, I get into work, I'm still limping a little bit, and I sit on the chair, I lift my leg up on the desk, and then two or three people say, how's your knee? And I said, you'll probably done that hundreds of times. He said, thousands. <laughs> it's habitual. There has to be conscious effort at the start. With the pain, you attend to it in these patterns, and other people attend to you. So you're presenting with the fight or flight, freeze or fawn response. So it's kind of fawn essentially, bit of fight to get out of bed and swear. Flight to kind of push through it. Freeze is, oh gosh, it's stopping you. And then fawn is getting, getting to work and putting your foot on the desk. And then simply repeating the mechanism that drives the pain, that drives the behaviours. Do that for two or three months, it's pretty much habituated. So I illustrated this to him. So what has to change first? Does the pain go and then his habits change? Or could he change his habits and then the pain goes? Well, in our culture, we think when the pain goes, I'll feel better. It don't work like that. It works where you have to feel better, then the pain goes. And think of any pain that's ever disappeared in your life, you feel better first before the pain goes. You might think you feel a lot better after the pain goes, and you do, but you'll have done something before, or somebody else will have done, that switches off the stress response for that pain. It changes the belief, it changes the emotion, 
it changes your physical reactions, it changes your words, it changes your thoughts, it changes your physiological responses, and then the pain changes. And most of those things happen invisibly. But because they're invisible, we don't know they're happening, all of a sudden this pain fades or disappears, we almost feel like we're not in control of the outcome of that pain. It's got to be the doctor, the physio, the the friend, the loved one, somebody else, if we haven't got the skills to get it. And if you haven't learned the skills, that's okay, because you can learn them. They weren't being very often repeated in childhood or early parts of your life. That's okay. You can learn them. So I said this to this guy that we're going to do some things that are going to change those habits, right? And the pain will look after itself. So he did some kind of physical conditioning so that he um, starts to attend to the leg physically. I explained to him that you could have all of those changes from an osteoarthritic point of view and he don't have the pain. So there's a thought process, it's a physical process. Uh, I got him to do the breathing regularly before work, before he goes to sleep, as he flipped the kettle, maybe after he'd done his exercises or before he felt a little uh, anxiety. But you always keep under the threshold where possible when you are installing these new behaviours. I got him to notice the care he got by explaining his pain from those at work, from his wife. The stuff at work was quite comforting. The nagging he got from his partner because she didn't want him to see him pain but couldn't help him with it it irritated him a bit more so and i showed him that anything else that threw the kind of stress into the pot drove that pathway um within about a month and it changed within a, a first a session or two but within a month pretty much pain free i said to him, what do you do in the morning he said i'll just get out of bed I put my foot down, I said my knee feels fine. I said, what did your wife say after you played golf like that? She says, she doesn't really ask. Because he doesn't present his pain to her, he doesn't pull a face, he doesn't swear, he goes to work and he doesn't do the behaviour after playing golf than he's, that he's always done. And people start to ask, well, what, after you play golf yesterday? Yeah, and they expect him to have his foot on the desk, getting fawned upon by anybody who wants to offer that empathy, sympathy, empathy, whatever you call it. And uh, they say, ah, is your knee all right? He says, yeah. He said, I thought you had arthritis. He said, well, I do. <laughs> but, I've, but I don't have the pain anymore. And this starts to shift other people's belief. Now, some people say that's not possible. You have to have pain if you've got arthritis. And let them keep that belief if that's what they want. Um, some people can see a different truth. Um, and you'll see the reality of the one you, you repeat long enough. So he now has five new habits uh, to replace the other five habits. And he started changing the behaviours first thoughts, the breathing pattern, the movements, the kind of the emotions of, of, of his behaviour and then he doesn't have the pain, doesn't need any replacement, if he needed one he could get one at some point but he doesn't need one, he doesn't have the pain and he plays golf, pain free, he doesn't have that morning routine he had, wife doesn't nag him anymore about that <laughs> morning pain, he's, yeah his mates don't fawn over him at work but actually he doesn't need pain to get those behaviours. He doesn't need the pain. So is there a few things that you do with your pain that are habitual when it appears? And could you start looking at changing some of those behaviours? Knowing that the pain is going to come for you at the moment, could you plan a few different things that you are going to do differently. Could you think something different? Could you speak differently? Could you breathe differently? Could you uh, not show someone your pain? Could you show someone your pain? Or could you feel differently about it? And there are things for you to work out. But if you start to change some of the behaviours, 
some of those habitual patterns that you might not even be aware of until you start to look, you will be able to change your pain.